you know, before I get into the the meat of this video, there's a few things that I need to see up front that will, of course, serve as the intro to this masterpiece. And of course, you have seen the title. Now, before I take the time to explain what is the Barack Obama syndrome and how one R. Kelly is suffering <clears throat> I believe from this syndrome let me tell y'all what's what we gonna deal with in the in the hole and you know this is the part two from last week last week's selective outrage again was part one And this video, <clears throat> this video here is going to serve as part two. And I sat back and I looked at these victims. And remember, this is the politically correct rant. This is what we can get away with saying on YouTube. But the reason why <clears throat> I have these four quote unquote victims numbered is because they're the four that I'm going to address in this week weekend's rabbit hole production. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. First is number one, and I'm going to just deal with victim one, victim two, victim three, victim four. In the whole, we will, you know, give their name. I'll give you the link so you can go read it for yourself so you can see that I'm not making this stuff up. But victim one. According to her testimony... She met R. Kelly when she was 14. She met him outside of the courtroom. Or courthouse, rather. Where he was being tried for child pornography. And according to her testimony... She was a fan of R. Kelly. She went to the courtroom. She went to the courthouse. She sees him in his entourage leaving the courthouse. And he walks over to her and he thanks her for her support. Now you gotta you gotta let the optics sink in. The guy is currently on trial for child pornography. He and his entourage is leaving the courthouse. And he walks over to a 14-year-old and strikes up a conversation. And none of, the, none of those adults in his entourage or R. Kelly himself thought that maybe this is not the time to be talking to no 14-year-olds about their support. But this is the story that she told y'all. And this is the reason why I'm, I'm going to ask her to come down into the hole. We're going to deal with that in the hole. I'm, I'm not going to go no further than that. Number two. And I believe that Sparkle, I could be wrong, but I believe that Sparkle, Sparkle was the aunt of the 
of the young girl who was at thir- 13 at the time who was in the sex tape. But she actually met R. Kelly when she was 12. How did she meet R. Kelly when she was 12, you ask? Because her aunt introduced her to him. And the reason why Sparkle says she introduced her 12-year-old niece to a sexual deviant is because her niece is an aspiring rapper, even though R. Kelly is r and I'm going to deal with her in the hole. Come on down in the hole. We're going we to deal with you in the hole. Number three. Out of all these witnesses, number three is the one that I would like to sit down and talk to. Out of all the witnesses that have come forward blaming this brother for accusing this brother of different shit, number three is the black female that I would like to sit down or a Starbucks latte, cup of coffee. She would have to pay for her own. It would have to be Dutch. But I would really like to talk to her, and I'm, I'm, t- I'm going to tell you why when you listen to her story. She meets R. Kelly when she's 33. She's newly divorced, just getting out of a marriage. She has a son, and she's 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 a DJ. She was a DJ. She worked at a radio station. And she was organizing a after party for one of R. Kelly's concerts. And she meets him at this after party. They exchange numbers, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. And her co-workers at the radio station got wind that she was communicating with R. Kelly. So her co-workers asked her the obvious question. How could you be involved with this dude based upon his history and everything he's been accused of? According to her own testimony, the badgering became so intense that R. Kelly tells her, come live with me. So this 33-year-old black female Quits her job, sells her condo, sells her car, moves to Chicago to move in with R. Kelly. And it's at that point, in that point alone, that she brought up the sex tape. And according to her own testimony, that was the very first time that he abused her. She said he started beating her. So... You want me to believe that at 33, you sold your house, you sold your car, you uproot, you moved to Chicago, and that's the only time that you thought to bring up the sex tape? You didn't think one, and even your co-workers is asking you about it, you didn't think to ask him prior to moving in, prior to quitting your job, prior to selling your condo, your car? Uprooting, you didn't think one time to ask the guy, hey man, what's up with these allegations? We're gonna deal with her in the hole. She she's got to come on down in the hole. Number four. <laughs> and what's funny about number four is that based on her own admission, she wanted a one night stand with the dude. She meets him in New Orleans. He invites her to a concert. After the concert, he sends her a text asking her to come to his hotel, his his room. She obliges. And when she gets to his room, he asks her, he asks her for a massage. She complies. And according to her testimony, you know, one thing led to another, they wind up having sex. And she said, she was cool with it being just if it was just going to be a one night stand. 
But it blossomed into a full-blown relationship where, of course, she's, a alleg- she's accusing him, of course, of being abusive. But just the fact that you were willing to have a one... Come on down in the hole. We, we got to deal with all this in the hole, man. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I could deal with Tarana Burke, the, the founder of the Me Too movement there in the middle. I could deal with her. I've dealt with her. I, I want a piece of Gretchen Carlson, that white witch on the end, who's a Fox News, one of those bimbos used to be on Fox News. But I'm going to have to save them for another day. Actually, I could deal with every last one of these uh, females in this picture. The one on the end, on the left, I believe, or it may be the one in the blue blue jacket, the blue blazer, was the one that he gave an STD to. He gave mono. And according to her testimony, she asks her mother, can, we go, can I go to the mall? Her mother says, yes, you can go to the mall. She goes to the mall. She's shopping at the mall. And who does she run into? And according to her words, R. Kelly walked up to her in the mall, grabs her, and starts kissing her. Now, either you believe that you are that fine or you think I'm that dumb to believe that this dude who don't know you in a crowded mall walks up to you and sticks his tongue in your mouth. (laughs) I could go on for days. I could go on for days. I mean, the, the stories and what I'm going to do in the whole, I'm going I'm to leave y'all the link so y'all can go see it. I'm not, I'm not lying. This, this is based upon their own words. This is what they said happened. And it's mind boggling to me. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm scratching my head and I, it, it's just utterly mind boggling that Sparkle, who introduces her 12-year-old niece to R. Kelly, a dude who's had sexual allegations surrounding him, as I told y'all last week, as everybody knows. He's had sexual allegations, fighting sexual allegations his entire career. So why, Sparkle, are you introducing your 12-year-old niece to him? Because she's an aspiring rapper, but he sings r and I mean, it, and then when you find out that she's at the studio and she winds up in a tape, you're surprised and you're pissed off. Let, let me stop, cause let me let me let me leave that alone. Let me leave it alone, cause <laughs> let me stop, cause y'all know what it is. Second nature, like breathing. We gonna we gonna deal with these four. And eventually, I may deal with all of them. But these four, I'm going to deal with first. In the hole, you know what it is, second nature, like breathing. You want it, send me an email, I'll get you the link. And you've seen the title of the video. Now... I listen to Negroes and you hear a lot of people now criticizing one Barack Hussein Obama. You know, they, they, they don't like him. You know, he didn't do enough for black people. You know, all of the criticisms that they have of one Barack Hussein Obama now. And when I hear people critique Barack Obama at this late date, I roll my eyes in my head. And the reason why I do that is because I'm all I'm always thinking you're a day late and a dollar short. We tried to warn y'all. I done an entire series. Those of y'all who follow my channel, follow my videos, y'all know this. My classic, no hope, no change for the Negro. 
I borrowed the whole concept from Barack Obama's campaign theme, which was hope and change. And I told y'all, there is no hope and there is no change for this Negro. But y'all did not want to hear that. Y'all loved Barack Hussein Obama. Y'all believe Barack Hussein Obama was the second coming of Jesus. Y'all treated that dude like he could walk on water. And when I made videos critiquing one Barack Hussein Obama, I got endless backlash from Negroes. How dare you criticize the first black president, which he actually wasn't the first black president. He was actually the second. We know who the first was, was Bill Clinton. But y'all love this guy. Y'all believe he was the second coming of Jesus. Y'all believed he could walk on water. And since y'all love Barack Hussein Obama so much, Y'all went out in his first term and y'all voted for that dude 98%. 98% of you Negroes cast y'all's vote for one Barack Hussein Obama. Y'all love that guy. In his second term, he lost not only white men, white men stopped supporting him. White men said, fuck that. He, he ain't what we thought he was. White men said, we're done with him. Realizing that he was losing white men's support, Barack Hussein Obama turned to the gay community. He asked the gays, listen, I need y'all to support me for this second term. Now, in his first term, he was anti-gay marriage. He believed that marriage was between one woman and one man. When he needed the gay vote to make up for the lag that he was going to he was going to experience from white men sitting on him, he turned to the gay community. The gay community gave them their agenda, which on the top of that agenda was gay marriage. We know the rest of the story. But in his second term, a few of y'all woke up because his support amongst you Negroes dropped from 98% down to 93%, but it was still in the 90 percentile. Y'all love this guy. And at each turn, I produced one of my classic videos, no hope, no change for this Negro. After y'all done showered the dude with praises, y'all done welcomed just like in, in y'all's Bible. When Jesus rides into Jerusalem, he's riding on that donkey and they had that parade. People are all shouting and they're they all singing and dancing. It's a festive movement because here come Jesus. Here come the Savior. That's how y'all treated Barack Obama. He was an American Idol pop star candidate. He was popular. Y'all love the dude. He could walk on water. He was just like Jesus. He was the second man in the history of humanity to walk on water. So when I talk about the Barack Obama syndrome, what is it? Because now y'all want to criticize Barack Obama, the same dude who yesterday y'all voted for 98%, 93%. But now today y'all want to act like y'all never voted for this guy. And I come back and say, no, 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 fuck that. No, y'all did vote for him. Y'all did love him. See, y'all now have a change of heart and y'all want to sit back now and pull the pedestal that y'all placed him on out from underneath him and watch him fall to the ground. 
because that's y'all. That's black people. Y'all some of the most fickle people on the face of the earth. Some of the most two-faced, backstabbing, double-tongued Negroes, people I've seen on the face of the earth. This is the reason why I feed you Negroes out of a long handle spoon. I don't trust half of y'all. Half of y'all, the other half I don't like. I've told y'all in many of my videos, man, listen, the dudes who spend their time making videos about me, trying to fuss and argue with me, dudes who, 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 who mention me in videos and talk about me, are guys who yesterday supported me. <laughs> this, this is why it's so fucking comical. I, I have the fucking receipts, as y'all say. Dudes who have contributed to the rabbit hole, dudes who have sent me emails trying to engage me, trying to talk to me. And now today you want to make a video arguing and fussing with me? Come on, guys, stop. I don't argue with Negroes and I do not argue with ex-fans. You follow enough of my content to know I don't care if you disagree with me. But that's y'all, man. Y'all are a fickle race of people. And y'all will turn in a millisecond on people who y'all just had on a pedestal. Y'all worship Barack Hussein Obama yesterday, gave him 93 98% of y'all vote. Today, y'all want to paint horns on his head and put a pitchfork in his hand and a tail on his ass. And I say, no, 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 no. I can't let y'all do that. I got to defend Brock on this one. Fuck that. No, can't let that happen. See, that's the Barack Obama syndrome. Where you take a person who yesterday you worshipped. <laughs> you worshipped this dude yesterday. I've done videos complaining about it. I've done videos complaining to y'all about how y'all carried on when Barack Hussein Obama was at those campaign rallies and you got, you got people crying and shit. And then what really baffles me is when I see one of you savages walking around with a t-shirt that has the most honorable, the most honorable El Hajj Malik, El Shabazz, Malcolm X, and then Martin Luther Coon, and then Barack Obama. It pisses me off. Don't even put Brother Malcolm in with them two coons. But somehow the, 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 the mindset is that Barack Hussein Obama is the fulfillment of Martin Luther King Coon's dream and Malcolm X's harsh critiquement of America. And then we have Barack Hussein Obama, the first black president, and he's the fulfillment of all of this. Bullshit. Y'all worship that dude yesterday. Y'all praise that dude yesterday. Now y'all want to criticize him. Now he's the second coming of the Antichrist, or he's the Antichrist, rather. And I say no. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, y'all got y'all got to go down with the ship. <laughs> don't don't try to bail now. Fuck that. And what R. Kelly is experiencing the same Obama syndrome. Because yesterday y'all worshiped this dude. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna. Let me take a sip of this because I, I, I don't want to slip up and say something that they can easily flag timestamp and flag the entire video. So I'm going to take a sip of this and calm down before I get to my commentary. Let's take a sip of this. You know... It, it is utter hypocrisy, man. It, 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 is, it is utter hypocrisy. And I, 
you know, I, I listen to people. I'm standing in line at the store. And I'm listening to this, these two Negro women. <clears throat> one Negro is at one register. She's at the register that I'm at. And the other Negro woman is at the other register. And, and they're talking about this R. Kelly piece. And I'm just dipping. You know, I'm, I'm listening in on their conversation, listening to the ignorance while I wait to get rung up. And they're going on and on about R. Kelly and he know right from wrong and blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that and, you, you, and all this. And they're going on about him. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking in the back of my mind, this is really amazing. That here I have two black women who I know without a shadow of a doubt. If I was to open your iTunes, if I was to look into your cloud, I know without a shadow of a doubt you got some R. Kelly and you got some of his videos downloaded to your gadgets. I know that without a shadow of a doubt because black women, what do black women say about R. Kelly? He makes some of the best love making music around. And we already know, like I said last week, we already know about the monorail and the step in the, in the name of love. Y'all listen, man, y'all worship this dude. And if y'all, like those two sisters, if y'all had such anger for sexual predators, sexual deviant, sexual deviancy, this dude, R. Kelly, should have never became an R&B pop star. Why? Because he married Aaliyah. Aaliyah was 15. Y'all should have canceled him back in 1994. Y'all should have said, listen, we're not going to support that dude. He married that girl, even though he got a fake ID from one of these black queens for $500. Imagine that. And she married him. And then when everybody starts finding out that they're, they're not just friends, it's just not a professional relationship, that they actually went off somewhere and secretly got married. This dude is, the, the chick is underage. And if y'all have such an anger for that type of behavior, y'all should have canceled that dude in 1994. He should have never became an R&B pop star candidate that he did. And black women today speak about R. Kelly as if his popularity is just sprung up like a weed. We don't know how he became so popular. Oh my goodness, I don't know how he sold all those, all those records. I don't have any idea who bought them. Oh, I never stepped in the name of love. Oh, I never attended our R. Kelly concert without panties or took them off in the restroom or right there during the concert and threw them on the stage. I never would grab R. Kelly by his crotch. I never would have a one night stand with R. Kelly allowing him to give me an STD. They act is if they have nothing to do with it. And that is the height of hypocrisy. Don't y'all see it? <laughs> it is the height of hypocrisy, man. Listening to these sisters, and you know, and, and the one who, who loves to bash this dude, and I, it's funny that she never ever references the role of black women. You read the comment threads in some of these videos on YouTube, and these sisters are going in. And I told y'all, I said, listen, man, you think they're not just talking about R. Kelly. They're not just talking about R. Kelly. They think that this is all black men. They think all black men have a problem with young girls, which is clearly not the case. They want to make out as if we all, you know, are, are chasing after the younger. No, not at all. Hell, I mean, what 
the hell can I do? <laughs> Come on, man. Shit. It, it's bad enough. It's bad enough dealing with a, a an adult black female, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. Not that I deal with them, but I'm just saying. It's bad enough dealing with an adult female who chronologically has the mind of a 14-year-old. That, that in and of itself is hell. So now you want me to go deal with her physically being 14 plus she's having the mindset of 14? No, I can't do that. It's bad enough dealing with this 40-year-old and she has the mind of a 14-year-old. That's bad enough. <laughs> it's bad enough that she's infant when you look at her brain. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me, let me. <laughs> oh, I could wish someone with that, but I'm not. I'm not. I have to say that for the whole. No, man. This this is hypocrisy, man. Barack, Barack Hussein Obama was y'all star. He was y'all star candidate. Y'all supported him. Y'all loved him. And it's the same with R. Kelly. R. Kelly, if y'all hated sexual deviant behavior and most certainly behavior that dealt with underage girls, R. Kelly should have never became a pop star candidate. The reason why he did is because black women supported him. That's just a fact. That's the reason why I say R. Kelly is y'all's Frankenstein. Y'all created him. So now, no, you can't put, you know, no, no horns on his head, no, no pitchfork in his hand, no tail on his ass, and make out as if he's the second coming of the, of, of the devil, he's the Antichrist. No, no, no. This dude was somebody that y'all worshipped. And the Barack Obama syndrome have y'all now criticizing him, finding fault in him, bashing him, even though yesterday y'all worship and put him on a pedestal. And I got to come back and say, no, I can't let that happen. That's hypocrisy. But I'm going to let that go. We're going to deal with these four so-called witnesses in the whole I'm eventually going to get them all, but I'm going to start off with these four. You know what it is, second nature like breathing. If you want that commentary on those four so-called witnesses, send me an email. I'll get you the link. Because at the end of the day, 